How do you get one of these on your farm? Wind turbines are now a pretty common sight across the UK. They form a key part of the UK government's strategy of achieving net zero and tackling climate change. And on top of that, they play a key role in providing energy security for this country, particularly after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. From a farming point of view, they provide a nice additional revenue stream to your farm business and a great way to diversify. Now, before I go any further, I am not here to argue the pros and cons of wind farms, whether they should be allowed or whether they're a blight on the landscape. That is not the point of this video. Full disclaimer, we have a wind farm on our farm in Southwest Scotland, and this video draws partly on the experience of that, coupled with industry developments over the past four to five years. So, let's get into it. There are three major hurdles that every wind farm needs to overcome in the development stage before construction can start. And they are, one is planning permission, Regional councils must grant a planning application for the development of the wind farm, taking into a whole host of considerations and public consultation. Two is access. Wind farms, due to their inherent nature, are very, very remote. So how is the developer and the construction traffic going to get access to the site? Generally, the fewer landlords that you can deal with, the better. Three is the grid connection. There is absolutely no point in constructing a wind farm unless you can actually plug it into the national grid and export the electricity that it's generating. From a landowner's point of view, look at those three major considerations and get an idea of where you stand. How are you gonna get access to the site? Do you need anyone else's permission? Where's your nearest grid connection? Generally speaking, the closer, the better. Do a quick feasibility study on the back of a sheet of paper and think about things such as the wind speed. The UK tends to be fairly blessed with wind speed, so you should be okay. But look at who's gonna be impacted by the wind farm, who lives nearby, where's the nearest settlement and how are they gonna be impacted? Are there any flight paths or radar issues or considerations that you've got to take into account? What's the environmental and the ecological impact to the site? And this will give you a fairly decent idea as to whether or not you should go forward and approach a developer. Developers, on the other hand, are continually searching out new and potential sites to develop wind farms. Increased government pressure to achieve climate goals and concerns around energy security means that there is increased demand to generate our own electricity. Developers look for sites in numerous ways. First way is through direct advertising. You get emails from the Farmers Guardian or for Farmers Weekly or other industry bodies with developers actively advertising and seeking out landowners and farmers for potential sites. Second is they'll go through land agents. These guys are the matchmakers between the landowner and the developer. I cannot stress enough how important land agents are at connecting landowners to developers for the development of wind farms. These guys are irreplaceable so make sure you have a very good relationship with your land agent. Number three is simply just grid connection research. One of the biggest hurdles in getting a wind farm developed and constructed is getting connected into the grid. So developers will quite simply just look at wind farms or land that are near grid connections into the national grid because the infrastructure is already there and it makes the job so much easier. If the developer sees potential on a site, then they're going to want to look at it further. They'll start by doing a little bit of desktop research, then they're going to want to come out and walk the site, get an idea of how they're going to tackle the project and what challenges are going to be in the way. Generally, there isn't a huge amount to see at this stage and all they're really looking to do is answer the question, is this viable and is it commercially viable? If the answer to the above is yes, then they're gonna to wanna to proceed to a heads of terms agreement. Now this is a non-legally binding document that just sets out the overarching terms that both parties can expect in the next stage of the project. This includes things like the lease area, the lease period, the rent that you can expect from the developer to the landowner, what happens at the end of the lease term and what happens if the wind farm is sold during that period. Once this is in place, the developer can, with the knowledge that the landowner is bought into those principal terms, then begin to look at developing the project further. They'll look at site and turbine layout, they'll look at exactly how the site is going to be accessed, 
They'll undertake bird and ecological surveys, they'll undertake public consultations, all things that are part of the planning application process. Given the lead times at the minute, they'll also start looking at getting a grid connection in place as there's currently a massive backlog of applications to get access to the national grid. Once all these stages are complete and the developer is happy that the project is viable, they will then proceed to an option agreement with the landowner. This is a legally binding agreement between the landowner and the developer and sets out exactly the process, timescales and parameters of the project. Along with this, you'll get an exclusivity agreement between both parties because the last thing that the developer wants to do is commit a whole load of money to the project for you to bugger off and go with someone else. So it provides them a degree of security. With all this in place, the developer will then proceed to get planning permission granted, they'll finalise the access and they will hopefully get a grid connection to export electricity from the wind farm into the national grid. And after all of this, if all three of those are granted, then the project will move into the construction and the operational phase. Timescales are so, so difficult to put on these things as every project is different and every project will have its own unique challenges. But be under no illusion that these things take a long time and they will not happen overnight. Just for context, our own wind farm took 12 years to complete from the first site visit from the developer through to when they started exporting electricity. Now, I'm under no illusion that this was at the longer end of the spectrum, but that will give you an idea as to what to expect. These things take a long, long time. Generally speaking though, I'd probably look at between one to two years to get a heads of terms agreement in place, and then another one to two years to get an option agreement signed up, assuming that everything's relatively straightforward. The option agreement then allows the developer a time scale in which to develop and complete the project, and this is typically three to five years. One of the main issues that we're seeing at the minute is the backlog of applications to get access to the grid, because quite simply, there's not enough capacity in the grid at the minute to plug in all of these new developments. It's gonna to have to be upgraded, and this is typically being reflected in the extended lease option periods that we're seeing at the minute. By and large, the first time that most people will notice a project is when the construction starts and the wind turbines start popping up out the skyline. And it's always the most exciting part of the project, but it happens right at the very end when the vast majority of work has already taken place. Here are a few pictures of the construction of our wind farm, which took place in 2016 to 2017 and had a build schedule of about 18 months. Now, I haven't gone into any of the very complex legal requirements that these projects take on or the financial implications because, quite frankly, they will be different for every single project. What I've tried to do is outline the rough process and the steps that landlords can take to make these sort of projects a reality. Above and beyond combating the climate crisis and providing energy security for the UK, wind farms provide a fantastic diversification project for your farm business. Not only is it an additional revenue stream, but once it's set up and operational, then it's also a passive income stream as well, which means that you can get back to the main job of farming the land. In light of the Ukraine war and the government's drive to meet climate targets, more and more developers are seeking out suitable sites. So I would encourage you to assess your land, speak to your land agent, and see whether or not a wind farm is a viable option for your farm business. Good luck.